Let us pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for this morning too, for enabling us to come to your presence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning once again. It's always good to see you. It is always good to see you. <laughs> Last week was full of unexpected and expected events, times. We all expected that the president, the new president, to be no grief. And indeed he was. But on Wednesday, we never expected that our beloved territory would be us. I will thank God that it is going to a better place. And I want to take the opportunity on behalf of the new vestry to thank all of you for the great work that you did during all her time. And it's been said. And especially this last few weeks, the prayer and the pointing, the organization. You know yourselves. God bless you. God bless you all. The second thing I want to comment on before I start the sermon the Lord has prepared for us, which is quite interesting. Last week's, last two weeks, okay, last week's reading, the letters to the Corinthians had the first verse that was read today. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, the power of God. And I want you to reflect on this. What does the cross, what does the cross mean to you? What does it mean to you? For those who are perishing, it's foolishness. But those of us who are being saved, is the power of God which keeps us alive and helps us be saved. I don't know about you, in those days, the Greeks, the Jews demanded science, and the Greeks desired wisdom. And from Africa, where I come from, I believe they, they, they desire miracles. I don't know about America. What does American people want in these times? But it concludes that if any one of us will boast, if any one of us will boast, we must boast that we are Christians and we are the Lord. We must not boast on in anything that we have, but boast in Christ. What is the meaning of the cross to you? This morning, the Lord is going to uh, remind us and guide us to eight lessons that we must touch taking steps, acquiring, using them here, and getting extra benefits when they go to heaven. Our guide to a lesson, the sermon on Mount Sinai, the Galileus, the Galileus that I just read in the Gospel. The teachings of Jesus Christ were very simple, but they were unique and innovative at his time, and they are still the same. His word has not changed. Jesus began teaching during the time when the Romans were in power and they are occupying Palestine. And at that time, in the Jewish families, culture, and traditions, there were four groups of people the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes. <laughs> And the zealots. And all of them presented a different viewpoint of their religion. So denomination or denominationalism did not start from today. Everybody is trying to portray his understanding of religion. What did the Pharisees want? They demanded strict observance of the Mosaic law expressed in the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. And Moses gave a lot of instructions there. And the Pharisees want everybody to obey it. 
The Sadducees were mainly from the priestly families, strictly accepted the law of Moses, but rejected the oral tradition that goes with it. After Moses, a lot of oral tradition came along, but they did not like it. But they believe in the resurrection of the dead. The essence were awaiting the Messiah who is just to come to free them from the Romans who were oppressing them. Then the Zealots. They were the militant Jewish group who wanted freedom. They were the freedom fighters. And they were centered in Galilee. And it is believed that Simon, one of the apostles, was a Zealot. So in every society, there are diverse groups of people with diverse interests. But this morning, we are talking about gay blessings. And we want to compare it to the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai, the same place. That shall not do this. That shall not do that. That shall not. They were all warnings. But we are talking about blessings this morning. The message of Jesus is one of humility, charity, and brotherly and sisterly love. The message of Jesus teaches us to be transformed from the within. We must be transformed from the within before it can reflect out. Our hearts must change. Our understanding and thoughts must change. That is the transformation the Word of God, especially Jesus, brings to us. All of the Beatitudes have an extra eschatological meaning that they have promised us in this world and also in the next. But if we have to benefit from, the, from it, then we must start practicing it from here. There is a, a great theologian by name George uh, St. Gregory of Nyansa. He lived in Cappadocia in Asia Minor around 380 after Christ. And this is how he described the values. Gelbu is a possession of all things held to be good, from which nothing is absent that a good desire may want. Perhaps the meaning of Gelbu may become clear to us if it's compared with opposites. What is not a Gelbu? What is not a blessing? Then what it is? The opposite of a Gelbu is misery. So if you are not enjoying the blessings, then you are in misery. Misery means being afflicted or willingly with painful sufferings. How do we get the state blessings? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who is poor in spirit? The one who is humble. The one who admits their strength and weakness. They don't think they are better than others. They don't put a false macho image. They don't always have their own way. They are made to God and to others. They are they also human and they need help. They are not too concerned about what they have or don't have, but are willing to share with others. That is humble. Pride is the opposite of it. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I believe that this is the time that I have to also say a few words about Terry. <coughs> I didn't know Terry just like I didn't know most of you. I've just been here just one month, and I was told that Terry was no well. I didn't know what she did. So I wrote her a letter, encouraging her in the Lord, praying with her, and asking her to come over until she gets better. And indeed she did come. We sat in my office, talked, and went to the prayer room and prayed together. We were expecting a miracle together. We were. <laughs> but God in his own wisdom called her home on Wednesday. And it is, it is our duty <coughs> to comfort Steve and the family. 
It is our duty as a church and as individuals who know them very well to come for them. Because mourning is also a blessing. There is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. So mourning is part of life. But when we are mourning, we must comfort each other. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. People who are meek don't try to get their way by using physical, verbal, and emotional violence. People who are meek don't try to make others feel stupid, pushed around, even when they know they are right. People who are meek do not manipulate others. Blessed are they who hunger and test for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. What are you chasing in this world? Is it clothing, new cars, new houses? What are you chasing? What are you after? If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, God is saying that you will be filled. People who hunger and thirst for righteousness stick up for those who are being treated unfairly. People who hunger and thirst for righteousness are willing to give people a second chance if they mess up. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. People who are merciful are willing to show mercy and forgiveness when someone does something wrong. As a matter of fact, it's part of our prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us be merciful towards one another. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The heart is very deceitful. You can see smiles on people's faces, but you don't know their hearts. God has not looked at our faces. He looked into our hearts. And they said also, if you have to see God, are you going to see God with all the unforgiveness that you have in your heart against people? This one I want to encourage you. Yes, you are hurt. You have every right to be hurt. But don't keep it there. It is defining you. It might not allow you to see God. It is not me who is saying it. It's a Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peacemakers help patch things up between people. Peacemakers promote together rather than breaking up relationships. And that's what this church needs most. Let us come together. Let us come together as one people so that we can move forward together. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. A lot of people will say no, this about you because you're a Christian. Oh, you are the only one who comes to practice. You are the only one who will do that. They will be talking all sorts of things about you. But don't worry. Your blessings are and your rewards are already in heaven. People who are persecuted for righteousness' sake are not afraid to stick up for people and things they believe in, even if others will make fun of them. Let us always do what is right so that it will be said of us. <coughs> we saw the funeral during her yesterday. Because of who she was. Even when she was sick, she will come and make sure that there is coffee, <coughs> all the things that we need in there. During the week, she will come quietly. She will go shopping and bring them there. So when you see a funeral where people are standing outside, then you know the kind of life that they there. Friends, this is our guide to blessings. And it is my prayer that we we'll all take them seriously because it's for all of us. <coughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us bow and ask for these gifts. Bow your head in the prayer and ask God to give you these gifts to receive.
Dear God, we thank you for the Beatitudes. Even if we don't understand them, help us to start practicing and develop and appropriate it for our own good. Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us